Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan Wiegand, and with me today is a man who made history as he's going to win his fourth straight podcast of the week today, Logan Stone. I think this is our fourth straight podcast of the day today, so this is actually pretty... <laughs> Only our second. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> right, we're not, not on number yet. three yet. Yeah, we're not on number three yet, but... Uh, oh, oh, hello, cat. Oh, back again. Um, <laughs> yeah, I still is... got my Ted Lasso background on. I guess I should change that. Yeah, huh? There's chaos happening right now in this in this podcast early. It's like MLS um, After Dark right now. Right. Um, been here. But... Jordan, how you doing? It, you sound better than the last time that we... Well, Do I? Because not... I my wife says it sounds worse. No, you actually, like... I think it's early, so you don't sound as like, uh, you know how we sound in the morning? You're much more like monotone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I feel like I sound worse in the morning, but... Yeah. Um, like you're more nasal. I so. feel better. I, I will say That's that. Good. I feel better. Thursday was the worst day of like my sickness. Right. Um, how's that comfortable for your cat? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I, so that is like, I, I feel like that is like good i i i i finally learned how to blow my nose that's not a joke like that was (laughs) something i just never knew how to do i'm 31 years old and i just learned how to do that so that's that's good like that cleared me up a bit i will say um i told ashley that she goes you're kidding i was like oh no No, i wish i was i wish i was but it was like what i would do is like i would like hold my nose like this and then try to blow and that doesn't work right because you're like pinching yeah and i would pinch it with like in the tissue like that and um or when everybody tell me just be like blow outward i just like like with my mouth i don't know i was a dumbass all right so i (laughs) finally learned how to do that and i feel a lot better so i think that that was uh, you know i never had that on my bingo card finally learning how to blow my nose so i feel accomplished even though that's something a five-year-old can do so <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive though like it like i only used gone to that use, far i only used to use tissues for like when my nose ran like i yeah. i did not like know how to blow my nose so jordan you know what your nose was saying you can't keep getting away with it he can't keep getting away with it he won't and he did for 31 years I still think we're going to get a shirt that says that stateside soccer show unable to blow your nose since what is it, 18 or 19, 18, yeah, 1800, 1980. Were you 1991, 1991. That's right. My wife's 89. That would make sense. Yes. Um, so, you know, Hey, now I understand like why people blow their nose. I just never got it, but now I get it. <laughs> so I feel great. Uh, in that sense, it's just my cough now. And um, we recorded our Ted Lasso recap before this. And there a few times where I'm like, what you might hear is is me kind of like talk in broken sentences at times because I'm trying to like hold a cough uh, until I can finish my thought and mute myself. So hopefully that doesn't happen too much. I feel like I'm getting better um, as we go. So I think the first 20 minutes of that episode, I was struggling. And then like, after oh, yeah. that, I felt pretty good. So. Yeah, it's pretty good, though. Yeah, so we'll be talking uh, all the MLS action. Uh, My intro to Logan was, of course, a reference to making history, St. Louis City SC. We just had ball watching on, um, you know, uh, last week, Thursday, to um, preview that game against San Jose. And the, the the thought that there could be a team that wins their first four MLS games and, uh, you know, the last team that has won three in a row in their first three was uh, Seattle. St. Louis did it last week. They come out today, uh, yesterday, and they win that game uh, by a pretty big margin. They win that one 3 nil over San Jose. And I, I tell you, it's probably good for Justin because I, I'm pretty sure when he, you know, we talked to him, he, he has Battle Hawks uh, XFL season tickets they were losing that game at halftime which is where he was then he had to leave for the st louis game his missouri team lost to princeton so a rough day but ends pretty good with st louis making history for uh for mls 
Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously is a massive result. Uh, this team now has 12 points, Jordan, and are pretty much a lock for playoffs. That's wild to say, like that we're we're four games. I mean, you think lot, so? You think they're a lock now? I think so. Yeah, like I, I nine teams, and the way, especially the way with some of these teams have played, I'm like, oh yeah, this team, this team's a lot better than uh, most of the the bottom of the West. Like I would say, I'm looking at the standings now. I would say from eight down. Jordan, that this team is better than uh, a majority of those teams. I think the Galaxy are still kind of uh, wobbly, but I think better than than they've shown. Uh, but I 100% think they're better than RSL, Houston, Vancouver, uh, Portland, SKC, and the Rapids. So, uh, I mean, it'd be really hard for this team to miss the playoffs now because of how I, I probably agree. I just can't say lock four games. Lock. Then. Completed. Is, is, I it, can't say that. Like it sounds weird, but like 18 of 19 teams, uh, when they grab three wins, make the playoffs. This is, I think, four. I don't know if there's ever been a hot start like this ever in MLS. Like it, it just feels like they are world beating. Can we have our own Arsenal Invincibles? Will they ever right. lose a game, Logan? Never. Never. I'm calling it now. Uh, and they've got a good stretch of games coming up, too. I think we talked about this the last time that we were on with ball watching. Their next games away at RSL beatable right i think uh, rsl defends better than most teams they play uh minnesota united at home i think they can beat minnesota united their biggest test is coming up um there's two games coming up where i, I think it's going to be very hard to win so i could see them winning logistically five or six in a row but then they head to seattle and then they come home against cincinnati so, and those are two really good teams i think the thing that shocks me the most um about this is not even the wins logan yeah. it is the 11 goals yeah that's um, yeah. only two teams have 11 goals. That's Atlanta and that's St. Louis. And they've only given up four. Atlanta's given up three. So I, I, I don't know. I think that's a, uh, that's pretty impressive. Cause we were worried about their, like could Klaus come in and, and, uh, and score at an MLS level. Yes. Now, of course he was gifted a few of those, um, there were some where I think in the Charlotte game, they like passed it right to Klaus uh, who scored, but you know, ju just the fact that they've have 11 goals and that th th they're really showing how to build a team, I think. And I think this is now the model franchise in the sense of when you're coming into an expansion side, getting your things lined up to, to enter the league, they were able to play their city two players. Yeah. <clears throat> players in uh the mls next pro or where you know wherever they were playing last year which wasn't a high level but it was enough for them to get used to each other it'd be a little play and then you add in some more pieces and all of a sudden they look really they look really good it's not like a flukish start you know that we've seen teams that have a flukish start where you say um like maybe they didn't score a lot maybe they haven't given up a lot either but like they're just getting like maybe maybe four games in they have four goals right and zero given up and you're like well their defense is really well but they're just getting enough goals to win it over no this team is scoring goals this is the first game they didn't have to come from behind which i think is a huge growth part too it's like we can do this other ways we can do this other ways than just you know having to have somebody score for us to be like oh crap we gotta get you know, we gotta get scoring they were able to score they were able to do um let's see how early was this goal uh they scored uh 34 minutes in giacchini which is kind of like a goal it's just like just fighting to get it over the line and then Klaus in the 45th plus third and then ostrock in the 68th which was a good goal um you know they had less possession than san jose but they had seven more shots 20 to 13 they had eight shots on goal to two for san jose so san jose's been playing better this year but we all kind of felt like this was going to be a st louis win with just like the weather with them going to st louis like this felt like it was a perfect uh setup for st louis to get the the fourth win yeah, it was nine degrees at the game start, or felt like nine degrees. It was snow flurries, but the fans were still nuts and standing. I mean, I guess if you're that cold, I would have stood too. Like it, the more movement you can get and standing in beside bodies is probably better. But again, they stood 
pretty much the whole match. I, I did see some sitting. Did see some sitting. Um, Here you go, not, Jake. <laughs> yeah, not as many. Like, people in the front that could see without – because people – you know how it works. Like, if the person in front of you stands up, then you've got to stand up, and then it's the domino effect. Um, but, you yeah, know, this was an absolute great game. I, I watched a lot of it, and I'll say one thing, that Klaus, uh, when he gets inside the box or when he gets the ball at his feet – he does that. He's got. He's so strong, uh, and he's able to kind of maneuver. And he's quick. He's shockingly quick. That it just seems like this guy is destined to be like a Golden Boot winner in this league, just because of how. I mean, he's just so great. Like it, it, just everything about him. Able to pass. He's able to distribute the ball. Um, he's made a couple of good runs um, that I saw. I mean, it, it just. It seems like this team is destined, Jordan, to be pretty decent um, for the, the rest of their time in MLS, and they seem very consistent. So. Kind of excited. They they sit only behind Seattle and XG. Um, they got six point seven. I think Seattle has like eight point something, eight point six or something like that. So uh, again, uh, and even there, Seattle's not like converting those. They only right. have six goals on the on right. season. Yeah, um, Seattle eight point six. So, but I, I think what else helps this be like okay? Well, not just because it's an expansion team doing it, right? This is the only team that's perfect in the season so far. Um, perfect meaning all wins. Um, you could say perfect meaning no losses too, but I guess. But I mean all wins. Four games played, four wins. They're the only one with twelve points. LAFC I thought could have got there, uh, but they, you know, they have a game in hand. They've only played three, but they drew this game against Seattle. So that is. Uh, you know, kind of huge. Klaus, our, uh, Klaus already has three goals. Stroud has two. Um, Giacchini has one. I don't think he ever, like, even had close to one at Orlando. Um, and then they're kind of spreading them out otherwise. You know, Parker, Ostrock, Loven, um, Hybert, um, all having one goal as well. So, Pretty interesting. Just had, had to open the show with with history here. Um, we'll we'll start talking some of the other games as well. But pretty big, pretty big result. Okay, let's go and talk uh, Seattle LAFC. Not much happened in this. Seattle had a lot more chances, but LAFC started getting some at the end here. Um, but it ends, you know, eleven shots to ten. Seattle had the edge there. Four shots on goal to three. For LAFC and Seattle having fifty seven percent of the possession. Otherwise, not not a lot going on. There's a lot of a lot of yellow cards though. Um, a lot of yellow cards in this game. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yellow cards in this match. But uh, Seattle and LAFC now sit second and third. In the West, both of them have seven points. Um, LAFC obviously have the game in hand, so it's kind of a bigger deal for them. But yeah, so we're starting off the show talking about the top three Western Conference team. Yeah, that, it was chippy as crap. Like, I, <laughs> they, you can tell they do not like each other. And, and uh, I think Trundle was asked for the game. Um, it's a couple of Seattle players. And a lot, all of them kind of had the same tune of, like, this isn't quite a rivalry yet, but it's getting there. Like, it it has the chance to get there because they don't have the history because LAFC is relatively new, where, you know, Seattle's got some historic rivalries with the likes of the Cascadia teams. So it, it is interesting to kind of hear their perspective on uh, the rivalry. I, it seems like every uh, game, Jordan, that we hype up in soccer uh, as being a top match always has the tendency to end in these nil-nil draws. Like even in the Premier League, like when we used to do the Premier League stuff, if it was a City-Liverpool game, Chelsea City, like it just seemed like it was always destined for that nil-nil, 1-1 one, one draw territory um but yeah there, there was a lot to like about this game if you're uh, i think a seattle fan more so than lafc lafc you're at home uh, you're, you're hosting a big team in, in seattle but i thought i you know i thought seattle actually looked better in the chances that they created lafc i think uh when denis Bo uh, boanga doesn't score um they, they're gonna have a tough time just because i think Vale is not quite to what he used to be like, he had a great shot goal. boanga yeah boanga looks good um, but if you're if you're Seattle, uh, Rui Diaz starts his first game uh, of the season because Abear is hurt, um, and I think there's going to be a lot of rotation if Abear is healthy in the next coming weeks between he and Rui Diaz just to keep them both healthy because they're phenomenal finishers. But I think 
with Rui Diaz not playing as many games, um, I thought that he uh, ultimately didn't look sharp. And I think that's what that kind of causes that. But Aaron Long going after the goalkeeper when Stefan Fry stomps on a ball, like he clearly had the ball in possession and Aaron Long tried to sn- like kick it out of his hand. It was wild. Like I thought there were, there were some big time. Jordan texted me. He was like, fight, fight, fight. I was like, what is this hockey? Like, but yeah, it, it's chippy. And if you add Aaron Long and Aaron Long's a, a chippy player. So it, it seems like that that was destined to become pretty. Yeah. Easy. So I don't, I don't like fights right, right. in, in sports, but I will say I love when games are chippy. I yeah. do. Uh, I, I know some people don't, they're like, we don't need right. this uh, chippy stuff, but I, I really do like, I like the face to face stuff. I yeah. like when they when get the, in each other's like, face, they're like, like they're not going to hit dude. each other. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I love the chippiness of like getting each other's face. Cause I've got, we've got a bunch of that in Orlando where you just get up in somebody's grill and that's, that speaks to how passionate they are. Yeah. I don't want anybody punching each other or anything, but uh, I thought Stefan Fry was going to go after Aaron Long. It was great. Yeah. It just, it creates all this chaos that is really fun to watch. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I predicted LAFC win three, one, you predicted Seattle win two, one uh, it wasn't close uh, to that, but yeah, um, Let's go to Atlanta and Portland, which finished 5-1. Now, you predicted 3-0, so you were close. I just said – I didn't give a score. I just said they st- stay atop of the East and beat Portland, mm-hmm. which they are. They are top of the East right now. So, <clears throat> you're welcome, Atlanta fans. But uh, Caleb Wiley scoring 25 minutes in. Almada scoring in the 45th plus 5. Uh, Yakamakis getting his first goal. Uh, making it 3-0 in the 59th minute, then uh, Arajo in the 75th assisted by Almada, and then uh, Wiley had the assist on the Yakamakis one too. And then um, a goal from uh, what, Ikoba for Portland, and then Almada again to make it 5-1. Just absolutely dominating performance. Now, uh, the bad thing is for Portland, they had an early lead um, – through Eric Williamson that was called back for an offside due to VAR. So um, unfortunate for them uh, or else maybe it changes a bit, but then, you know, Atlanta was able to kind of get control there. So um, the, the fact that they were able to do all of this without Yakamakis for so long in the first three games, and then for him to finally score now, he got his first start um, in this game as well. And, you know, I don't think Portland's that bad. So to win five one, I, I think this team is legit. Are are you feeling the same way with Atlanta this year? Yes, up until the summer when they go and sell Almada. Like I, I and I hundred percent think they do. Like I don't think there's any chance in hell that he's here after the summer. Like he's going to bring in Jordan. He like people were saying like thirty five million would not be out of the the realm of possibilities to bring in thirty five million dollars to a, an MLS club. I, I just. I don't want to see it, but I I can't imagine Atlanta United with their ownership passing on the chance to get that much money because that's an infusion of cash quickly to a club that I think, like, yes, they look good right now, but I still, I'm still got Atlanta United of last year stuck in my head. Like, I didn't play anything like this last year. So, what I would say is, I hope that they keep Almada for the full season. I yeah. think if you're a part of that team, like if you're somebody upstairs, you're looking at these scores and you're thinking, we can win MLS Cup. Mm-hmm. Like we're playing so well. We can win MLS Cup. And I'm going to hold on to Almada until we can do that. Now, of course, if they start bringing 35 mil, you might think, all right. And you know what? I probably would have had a problem with this if it was last year. But if you're giving Garth Lager away 35 million, uh, yeah, maybe he can story. really speed up some of the timeline yeah. here, but so that's the only caveat I have with that is that I would trust Loggerway with 35 mil to infuse some stuff with this team. But otherwise, if I'm a fan of Atlanta, I'd be pissed. I would be pissed <laughs> if yeah, I'm not at least be. halfway through yeah. the season. Cause you have yeah. a chance. You have an actual chance. You're the only team to score 11 goals other than St. Louis. Uh, you're the top of the East right now where most people thought Philly would be right now. So you ha- nobody expected you to be on this timetable right now that I think you can justify it to holding on throughout the year. Uh, maybe you can even sell him in the summer, but loan him out for the rest of the year um, just to get a chance at an MLS Cup. 
I think is the way to maybe play that. Yeah, and they finished 11th last year, gave up 54 goals. I think that's where they've been better. Uh, like, yes, the goals are impressive, but again, they are coming only from giving up Wiley three. and Almada. But yes, they've given up three, and be, because they have a guy like Miles Robinson back, they're playing with Brad Guzan in goal, a healthy Brad Guzan, which is massive because he was all, all last year with the, the both of them out with the Achilles injuries. Uh, and then you go add Gutman, who I think has been one of the most, uh, I, I would say, stable and consistent players. Uh, what is he left backs um that this league has been or has seen the most impressive thing too is caleb wiley is more of a defender and he's already scored three goals they put him off the wing he plays left back midfield defensive back like it, it, everything that defensive back he's not like a safety or anything but like um he he's He's played in multiple positions is what I'm trying to say. He's played defensive midfield. Like, this kid's all over the place. 18 years old, Jordan. He just turned 18. He's a forward that could play in the United States system. I think he got called up for the U.S. men's national team or the U.S. Uh, World Cup, like the – what's the U20, I think it is? Yeah, yeah. Um, like we've got a lot of young, great players, Jordan, and this is really exciting to see because, again, we've got this really good generation. We've talked about this. We've got guys like Brendan Aronson – and Paxton Aronson and Timothy Wea and like some of those younger guys, you've got Jesus who's young, but then you're starting to look even lower and it's not, it's like, it's replenishing itself, which is brilliant. Um, but I, I, you know, I'll go off on a U.S. men's national team tangent there for a little bit, but again, I'm really impressed with the way that Atlanta have started the season, but I'm still, I need to see it for two months of consistency and the fact that Almada could leave it could really mean a lot of trouble because we've seen what it does to teams like the Rebs when you lose kind of guys that are just these creative forces in, in your front attack. Do you want to, do you know what I want to see consistency for two months of the Philadelphia um, union? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll jump yeah. on your bandwagon and say that with Orlando as well. <laughs> uh, Montreal did not score a goal all season. They scored three against this vaunted uh, Philadelphia defense um montreal home game philadelphia don't play well on turf apparently it was new turf um it was bouncing that ball was bouncing lots of new it was flying too it was like you make a pass this thing was like zipping uh across the field there but uh kyoto scores a penalty three minutes in now so i'm watching it on tv and i have the uh, march madness game on my phone and you know so i'm dual, dual screening here and I'm watching, and I see a ball go over the top of the net. And I'm like, all right, cool. We survived that. I think I texted you like, man, they're dominating, right? And then I look down at the phone to watch some of the basketball. Then I look back up, and they're uh, doing a penalty. And I was like, what? What I missed and what they replayed is that on that ball that was going out of play, there was a handball. So they called a foul. They called a penalty. So Kyoto comes up, steps up buries it three minutes in. I'm like, this is already a disaster <laughs> for Philadelphia. Um, Ura ties it up in the 46th minute, um, like literally 20 seconds after halftime, and then takes the lead in the 60th minute. And then it kind of falls apart for Philly there. Kronza gets a second yellow in the 69th minute. And then in the 90th minute, 04 ties it up. Then it's ruled off, and then it's ruled back as being a goal. And then in the 90 plus 8, Kyoto again. And look, I saw a lot of Union fans very upset with the refereeing in this game. And maybe on like normal foul calls, there was a little bit leniency towards Montreal, but I think they got, this is what I'm going to say, I think they got every big call correct in this game. The penalty was a penalty. I think Carranza, he got a yellow for dissent originally, right, for mouthing off. He gets a second yellow, which was a yellow card. That's a yellow card. I don't care. So that's, you shouldn't be doing that when you're on a yellow. So you're a dummy, you get sent off. You go to the... <laughs> You go to the dum dum spot, right on the on the logo, and then you have um, the offside goal, which now, granted, was not handled well by VAR. I think that this is what they got the call right, but it looks amateurish. And what I mean by that is, he goes, the ref goes over and looks. One, it takes two minutes 
for them to even decide to var it, okay? It scores, I text you at 925 saying it's 2-2. At 927 is when they decide to go look at VAR. Yeah. Okay? He goes and looks at VAR. He comes back and says, no goal. And it's because they didn't show the angle that shows it was off, that not offside. So for people that didn't see this, Kai Wagner slips at, at the end, it looks like, right? And he stays down and like stays near the goal line. And uh, the camera keeps panning away. Like, you can't see him. So then it looks like a clear offside. And you're like, okay, that's offside. But from the other angle, you see Wagner is actually keeping them on side. So that is the issue. And then what apparently happened. Now, Montreal player says that he went and told the fourth official to take a look. And they went and looked again. I didn't know you could do that. But... What the ref said is that they they told him that they didn't see he th- that the guy didn't look at the the better angle. So I don't know what the issue is here. I don't know if the guy went up there, looked at one angle, and said clearly off, and then came running back down to wave it off, or and like didn't get a chance to see it. But I feel like whoever there should be communication, right? Is the main thing here. And I don't. There probably is, and we don't know what that communication is. But there should be communication where the ref is looking at it and says, okay, I'm seeing he's off. I'm going to disallow this. And then the VAR guy says, wait, there's another angle you have to see still. And then they show him that angle. Meanwhile, they show this angle on the Apple feed for about only a couple seconds, and we don't get to actually see it like at all. So all the Union fans are saying that we're robbed and stuff. I don't think we were robbed. And then... I saw people trying to ask for a foul on the Kyoto goal when uh, Ambasio just totally gets uh, just bossed off of his space. I, there's no way he should lose that battle at all. Uh, you can say you're down for like 21 minutes and you're defending constantly at that point. And I actually do think if Blake's healthy, this this uh, the second goal specifically like hits the bar, comes down, and then falls to O4, who heads it in. Um, Blake probably saves that in one of those spots where he comes out and grabs it as it's getting crossed in. But I, I don't know. I This team is not playing right right now. And I keep getting people telling me, well, we didn't start well last year. They'll be fine. This doesn't look fine right now. It, it doesn't. It, now, I get Blake's injured. Bendick's not the... Bendick is not the answer for a second goalkeeper. Thankfully, Blake is only injured with a strain, like a grade one strain, and he'll probably be back soon. But if we, if if he is out for a longer time and we're stuck with Bendick, this team would be dead in the water right now. They are not even playing teams that are tough right now. They struggled against the fire, right? They, uh, they go to Montreal, a team that you should beat with the way Montreal was playing. Had not scored a goal. And they can't beat them then. Uh, the red card really, really killed them. And thank God they play Orlando on Saturday because I think they might be able to sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, defensively, they'll be fine. Like Defensively, you guys will look like, oh, man, this Union team's back defensively because Orlando City can't, contr- can't create. But I, I will say, Jordan, it took you guys nine matches last year to give up six goals. This year it's taken you three. Uh, no, four. Sorry, I can't. And two losses already. Yeah, right. Um, and I, I think too the, the the big concern with the union right now is obviously with Andre Blake. Groins just don't magically uh, heal themselves very quickly. Uh, they, it, it's something that I think is going to bother him for a little bit. And I think that ultimately there's going to be some hesitation with that. But you guys do. You guys look a little bit disjointed in the back, and that's not usually something that's very characteristic of these Jim Curtin Union teams. Is that like defensively over the last three years? You guys have been – last year you guys were historic in the way that you guys defended. This year, it looks like this team couldn't defend anybody. And, you let again, like you said, three goals to a team that hadn't scored who really, without Kyoto, don't look like anything that's going to be attacking dangerous. So, yeah, I I feel like 
right now, four games in, there, there's some big concerns with the union. Um, and I think that playing on the road hasn't looked very fun for you guys. Um, I think at home it's even looked shaky. So it, it just – there's been moment and that Columbus crew game, like you said, without some luck there, there you guys are in some real trouble. Um, the, the, it, the the Chicago game at home. Yeah, I know Chicago is not playing as bad as we thought, but right, it shouldn't take you one nil. Uh, it, it shouldn't take you that long to get one nil, especially they were playing a man down, right, right. fire. And then the, the crew game is the one that people keep kind of going back to, but I keep saying that there's two handball penalties that are not called. You know, if they're not called, it's two one. Mm-hmm. And then even then, you can't even say that because anything can change right. uh, throughout the rest of it. So they haven't looked right. It, and God's dog thing. God's dog there, MVP. I mean, he's he's almost like non existent at times. So it, it that's concerning. invisible. Yeah, yeah. As you put it, uh, uh, he did have twenty points yesterday though. So <laughs> I think it was twenty. Uh, because well, you got double for the captain. Right. I did, yeah. So he got ten points. points. Right. So, but yeah, no, he he's right. he's, he's not been MVP caliber, or you know that that level. And they need somebody like that. They they cannot afford to not have somebody up there that's scoring, you know, fifteen goals. I can't see this team finishing top of the East if no, things not this team go, not right no, now. Yeah, and no. Atlanta, the way Atlanta's playing right now, and even teams like New England or Cincy, right? Um, Nashville, they have a better shot. Right. Of, of being top of the East than than the Philadelphia Union. Yeah, because Nashville defends. Uh, Atlanta's defended really well. I, I think Cincinnati's you know hit or miss when they defend. Um, but the Union man, they look they look lost, completely lost defensively, and that's not normal. We predicted a Union win. I did one nil late goal. Um, mm-hmm. You said win. You didn't give a score line, so there you go. Got that wrong. Sorry, Montreal. Okay, uh, New England beat Nashville 1-0. This is the first goal that Nashville has conceded all season, um, and it's from Gustavo Bo. It was a pretty good goal, too. Um, pretty even game, 48-51 to 51 or 52 possession. Uh, Nashville had 16 shots to 10, but New England had five on goal to Nashville's three. But, uh, yeah, so uh, we had predicted a 1-1 draw for me, and you had a 1-0 Nashville win. So I did have right, though, that they were going to concede their first goal, and they did. So I feel a little validated with that. Um, But, yeah, that puts New England in second place right now. They got nine points. They're kind of flying high to start the season. Yeah, and they've kind of figured things out defensively so far. Um, And I say that uh with i guess no confidence at all um i i still feel like the, if petrovic leaves then they're in a lot of trouble because i think their defense gets relatively worse he could probably uh, leave in worse. the summer too yeah i think he's i think he is somebody that would leave in the summer i wouldn't be surprised if dewan jones is gone in the summer like we've talked about this revs team kudos to them for playing well to begin the season carlos heel has been hurt he didn't play yesterday um, and they still grab the win against a very stout defensive Nashville team. Uh, and and Zimmerman was, I think he had like the flu or something. He's still playing, but he was sick yesterday. He didn't defend, uh, you know, they didn't defend as well as they normally do. But with the Revs, they're just so hard to, to think of as a, a team that's going to be up there at the top of the East when it comes summer because of all the players that they could lose. And I really do think that there's a good chance they lose a lot of them, so. Nashville sit uh, fourth in the East right now, seven points. Kind of all bunched up here. Um, But, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Cincinnati – no, not Cincinnati. Who am I talking about next? Red Bulls. Red Bulls beat Columbus Crew 2-1. They come from behind as uh, Matan uh, gets his first goal in like 38 games uh, for the crew. And then in the 58th minute um, and 86th minute, we have New York Red Bulls score and win. Crew had more possession. That's usually, you know, Red Bulls are kind of fine with not having possession. And 15 shots to five. Red Bulls with 38% possession. Red Bulls put together 15 shots compared to Columbus's five. So Columbus kind of having a so-so start to the season, right? Um they look good at times, but they only have uh, one win. They have two losses, 
in one draw so far. They're giving up seven goals and only scoring five. So they got to turn that around if they want to kind of be where people think they should be. Yeah, Dante Vince here gets his first goal in MLS. Uh, Lukina scores for the first time, I think, in like 20-some-odd matches, too. Matan hasn't scored. <laughs> like, it was just a bunch of guys that haven't scored like they're projected to. Vince here's new. Um, he's their new DP signing. But uh, finally, the Red Bull get off of the Mark Jordan. They, they've been really struggling uh, to grab goals, and they have not um, kind of – played to those expectations especially you and i had and pretty much the whole league i think was pretty it was a resounding like top three should be where this team some finishes. people them for a supporter shield i don't right. know where they were getting that but yeah they are uh 10th place they have five points they're kind of bunched in with teams like i mean they can literally jump up to like third yeah. uh fourth with a with a win next time uh because you know fourth place is seven points they have five points in 10th so with the way that the season starts, so they can kind of still jump up there, but they're you know five points off of first place already. Um, I mean, just looking at the East from fifth down, I would say all those teams have been pretty disappointing so far. Yeah, like and, it, and the Crew are in twelfth. Yeah. Um, we, we a lot of people kind of expect it more from them too. So they're just not good defensively. I mean, you lose Jonathan Mensa, but they weren't good last year either. So like I, I just think that this team can't defend and Wilfred Nance. Uh, with that Montreal club last year, they scored a ton. That's why they were good. They didn't defend very well. So that's not really been Wilfred Nance's thing. His defense has never been a, the, the, the thing that he's really focused on. Um, and if this team can't score, man, they, they really can't defend. So uh, it should be pretty interesting to kind of follow. But very disappointing uh, start for both teams, I think. Well, NYCFC here, they, you know – Started off kind of disappointing, but now they're actually above the union in the standings. They beat DC three to two. Magno scoring in the 17th minute, Rodriguez in the 37th, Tiago Andrade in the 88th, Christian Benteke scored for DC in the 46th, and Burnbaum pulled one back in the 90th. Um, kind of a back and forth game there. I mean, if they hadn't given up that 88th minute goal, they could have. They could have tied this game, DC, with that 90th minute game. Klish with the assist there. Um, both assists, actually. Good to see Benteke scoring. I think that'll help the team. But this is a pretty even game. New York City had less possession than DC, actually. Um, it, they had 10 shots, NYCFC, to DC's nine. And they had six on goal to DC's four. So pretty even i know wayne rooney said that he would have loved to sub everybody in the first half if he could have um he said the first half is what killed them and i can see that's two nil at halftime uh they could have they probably could have played a lot better in, in the second half but i i do think i see improvement from last year still under under wayne rooney uh they said 11th they're above columbus right now dc and i know well, nycfc is in fifth place um which is you know they lost a lot of players. People didn't really think NYCFC would be as high as they are right now. Um, my biggest concern, I mean, in the attack, I think, yes, DC United are a lot better than they were last season. But, again, last year they had a 71 goal uh, against Tally. Uh, and this year they've got off to a great start with eight goals given up already. Um, they've got a lot of these 3-2 games so far. Uh, so this is this is a big concern for me. Their whole back line is basically new. I think Burnbaum's the only one that was uh, in a, a consistent at center back. They've got uh, Jais, Derek Williams, who uh, I'm sorry, just can't defend in this league. Ruan, who I thought was pretty much done with Orlando. He can't stay healthy. And then you got Tyler Miller, who is relatively a good goalkeeper, I think, in this league. He's just... Uh, anytime that Tyler Miller's been anywhere, though, Jordan, he's quickly been exiled or outsed because somebody else better comes along and it's Wins usually the not job, yet, yeah. right? You know what I mean? So I, I do consider them defensively uh, atrocious right now just because eight goals given up so far. I think that leads the league, I think. Or no, sorry, Portland gave up 10. Uh, there you go, Portland. Congratulations. But eight goals, that's tied for second for worst uh, amount of goals given up so far this season. Um, and they're tied to the likes of like a Charlotte. So that's how bad they've been defensively. And I don't think it's going to get any better defensively. So, yikes. 
Speaking of Charlotte, they only conceded one this week against hey, your Orlando City. Right, there you go. Uh, Copetti, Copetti scored 26 minutes in, Vargas 37 minutes in. Hmm. And uh, how do you pronounce Ojeda? Ojeda? Yeah, Ojeda. Ojeda, 57th minute. There you go. Uh, pulled one back for Orlando. Um, Orlando had more possession, had 19 hmm. shots to eight, seven shots to four on goal for Orlando. And. Um, Tell me, Logan, you watched it. What's going on with Orlando? What's the actual issue here? Um, I would say that Martino Heda had not yet played like a DP midfielder. Facundo Torres has been awful, um, almost non-existent. Erchon Cara can't even find the bench. Uh, he does have a knock, but I think Erchon Cara's time is very limited with how well Duncan McGuire has been. And then you also have uh, Ramiro Enrique playing extremely well. I, Jordan, we just spent a ton of money on a DP striker last year, and he's he's going to be a third option. Um, that that's ultimately what the, the concern is so far. I will say reading off those stats in the second half, I thought Orlando city's attack looked the best they've ever looked. Uh, and that was all in part due to the fact that Martino Heda in the second 45 minutes played in an unbelievable 45 minutes. Uh, I, I think he finally showed, uh, and honestly, it was that goal. It's like, once he hit that goal, it was like he figured out, oh, I can play in this league. And and then it started to really look like he could play in this league. Duncan McGuire comes on for Enrique, and he looked phenomenal. This kid is Daryl DK 2.0, even better, I think. I think he's more clinical than Daryl. Um, so I, I'm I'm more optimistic than I think a lot of people. There were people all over our mentions, in my mentions for the Orlando City side, Twitter, the that my podcast on that side saying like, what's wrong with this team? This team sucks. I'm like, it's going to take two months for this team to figure out what's going on. And I think luckily, you said that at the beginning too. Yeah. I said right around summer is when this team, I think is really going to start to hit the ground running June leagues cup is what I've got it projected as. And I think that, that that's a pretty accurate statement. And I think you're fine. If you, if you just get into the playoffs and that's nine teams, I don't think that's going to be that hard in the Eastern conference this year. Um, but I do think, that's been the biggest issue for me. Their defense, I think, has been a little bit more wobbly lately with Tigres and then now Charlotte. They've looked a little bit inconsistent, but I think a lot of that's due to the fact that Antonio Carlos isn't there. Still only giving up three. Right. Uh, two of them yeah. this Against, week. Yeah. I think it's funny, though, when you say, like, the second half is the best their offense has ever looked uh, yeah. this year when they only scored one. Right, right. <laughs> uh, but they've only scored three on the season, so yeah. – you know, they're averaging less than a goal a game yeah. uh, as it currently stands. So uh, not great. Uh, hopefully they can get that sorted out. But huge win for Charlotte. They were sitting at zero points. Um, they, jump up to, <laughs> they jump up to 14th, all right, from 15th place. Um, so Chicago is actually at the bottom. I didn't even, I didn't even think of that. Uh, <laughs> Because Charlotte and Montreal were both at the bottom, but they yeah. both got wins. So that puts uh, Chicago – sorry, Andrew. It puts Chicago at the bottom of the East right now. But um, huge win for Charlotte. It, you know, they got to get something going. They've, they have benched Sverdursky, right, uh, which was, I think, a yeah. shock. And Joswiak, both yes. DPs sitting on the bench. Enzo, Enzo Capetti was the problem child last match yeah, because he yeah. was throwing a fit. And Christian Latanzi was like, well, I – I just don't see where I this need somebody is really, to score goals. Right. And then he freaking goes out and scores. But the fact that Swarderski was on the bench is just a, a non selection was kind of interesting for me. And you know, you kind of mentioned that with your with your team, right? Yes. That, like you spend all this money and they might be third yep. choice. That's what we kind of always talk about when it comes to buying players outside of MLS. When you're like you can spend all that money on somebody and then it just totally fail. Um which is one of the things about soccer that you that you don't really get in some of these other sports. Um, I guess you can kind of equate it to like going out and getting Russell Wilson and then him sucking. But uh, Bronco country, let's ride. Yeah. We're Logan's so, fantasy team right into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I had Charlotte get their first point of the season as a prediction, and you had Orlando win two nil. So. Uh, so I was kind of right. I should have said first three points is what I probably should have said, but I did have them getting a result. So, but one thing on Carol Swiderski, like they, they, they've yet to play him in the position that he's most comfortable, which is either yes. a nine or a shadow nine. And they've yet to do that. They've played him on the right wing and, and he is, he is a really good player in this league. I'm shocked that they have not put him back. Yeah, he played he well last year. Yeah, so I don't get it. I don't it is it. weird that they're, 
I don't know. It seems like they kind of bought Kopetti and Sardersky almost for the same role. Yes. It's kind of like we, you don't, we don't have space. enough right spaces to put both of them in the same role. Hey, a four four two, Jordan. It works. <laughs> Go the Ted Lasso route. Yes. Um, Toronto beat Miami two nil uh, for their first win of the season. Huge result here. You had Bernadeschi and Larea assisting Osorio in the 48th minute, and then Bernadeschi assisting again for Mark Anthony K's goal in the 69th minute. Nice. It was a pretty even game, 48 to 51% possession, some change on each of those. 12 shots for Toronto to nine for Miami. Six shots on goal to Miami's three. Um, I think we got this wrong. We both said Miami win. Uh, but huge for Toronto to get this result, Logan. That puts them in a playoff spot. That's how quickly they just jumped up there. They got five points uh, on the season. They're actually above Orlando as it currently stands. That's how quickly Toronto turned around with their first win of the season. And you and I, I mean, it feels like we're having the same season all over again. Last last year in the East, it felt like it was the union or bust um, with uh, who was chasing them last year? Montreal. That's right. It was those two. And then all the way, like from three down, you could have had any kind of situation happen. And all of a sudden, you know, Atlanta sitting third or Orlando sits third or Red Bull or NYCFC or. Yeah. Orlando was like third and then fell all the way to like the last playoff spot. Right. Yeah. So uh, this East is the wild, wild East. Uh, I'll continue to call it that because it's so unpredictable compared to the West. The the West, I feel like is the most predictable of the bunch. Like it is so predictable as to who's going to sit the top four spots. I think Um, even now, except for St. Louis, I guess, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I mean, with the Eastern conference, right. uh, Toronto, this is a massive win for them because they had not looked good. You and I talked about the fact, like if this continues to go on, how hot does Bradley's seat get? Um, this one cooled it off a little bit, I think, because they and Insigne is injured, so Bernadeschi right. stepping up is he's great. great. Uh, Miami is just a small setback; they're still in a playoff spot. They got six points; they still have two wins on the season. So that was an away loss for them. So I'm sure they're not beating themselves up over it. They though both away games for them have been losses, um, but they're undefeated at home, Miami. So uh, I'm sure they'll they'll probably feel all right about how that went down i guess especially when they get messy in the summer it'll be everything (laughs) we'll see now he's linked to barcelona again it's like that's annoying they can't afford it um cincinnati took an early Mm. lead against chicago eight minutes in moreno scored um then the fire went off all right um shabilko 32nd minute great goal um a penalty in the 45th and then Chris Mueller in the 46th minute, at least some Orlando player can score. Right. And then you have, <laughs> <laughs> then they, at least a it. union player can score too. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> then they blow it. Sergio Santos uh, in the third, in the 84th minute, another former union player makes it uh three, two. And then the 87th minute Moreno scores again to make it three, three, pretty even game. This is like 49.1. The 50.9 it says. It was like the most even I've seen on the MLS site. 14 shots to 14 shots. But Cincinnati had nine of those on goal to Chicago's four. So, you know, Chicago, I was like, man, they're really coming around here 3-1. But they just absolutely blew it at the end. Yeah, no Shakiri for the Faya. And no uh, Lucho Acosta till late uh, in the Cincinnati match. And I, I don't think it was ever meant. I don't know if he pull up a knocker or what happened, but Lucho comes in off the bench and provides one of the best balls I've ever seen. Well, besides the one to Wayne Rooney, or like, no, it was Rooney to Lucho. It kind of looked like that. It looked like the Wayne Rooney ball into Lucho Acosta when he scores on Orlando City. Yes. Um, it, this one was beautiful. I mean, it just misses the defender. I, I don't know how he did it, like how perfect he, he placed it at the foot of, I want to say it was Junior Moreno, or no, Sergio. It was Sergio. It was late. It was either junior or I can't remember. It was, it was Santos. Was it, it was Santos? Santos. Yeah. I believe, yeah. Um, that's right, because he can't really score unless you provide him a good ball. Um, no, but I, I think with uh, Jordan, with, with DC, uh, this Cincinnati team, it, it's almost like it's unpredictable at the moment. Um, they are sitting third, but I, like this is a game I thought they should have held on to better, and they just absolutely let Chicago run through them. Um, they just didn't what look I- good defensively. What I like is that they came back. Like, yeah. if, if you're a Cincinnati fan, 
it would be a little bit more disheartening to lose that game when you have these expectations this season. So to come back and draw away from home, I think that's a good sign for them um, to keep them up there in that like third place. They're only two points off first. They have a shot still at winning the East. You know, we're only four games in, but um, I was yeah. going to write them off right now. Like, <laughs> I, told, I already wrote the union off of that. Yeah. So I, well, I, nobody's I, catching St. Louis at this rate. If they win two more games, I think it might as well just give them the supporter, <laughs> the supporter shield. shield. <laughs> Could you imagine if they win the supporter shield in their first season? I mean, that should be wild. Uh, Dallas beat SKC. They come from behind as SKC score their first goal of the season by Daniel Salloway. And then uh, Velasco in the 55th and Jesus Ferreira scoring his third goal of the season in the 84th to win it. Again, pretty even, fifty-one to forty-eight percent percent uh, percent possession. Twelve shots to eleven. Three shots on goal to three shots on goal. Um, but Dallas really had to kick it in gear in the second half here to come from behind because, um, look, uh, spoiler alert is before we talk about Colorado, all three teams that had not scored going into this week have scored. So. Uh, kind of depressing. I was hoping for some bit of history other than the St. Louis thing too, but so SKC still kind of sit near the bottom. Uh, Dallas is in fourth of the West, so they're they're doing pretty good right now. They're kind of they they haven't looked great at times, Dallas, but they still kind of getting the results they need to kind of be near the top. So I guess that's something. That, another Texas team here just completely. Uh, surprised us. I guess Houston beat Austin 2 0. Bossy in the 71st minute with a penalty kick, and then uh, Herrera scoring his first goal for Houston. Um, Austin is, is so disappointing right now. They're in six, all right, uh, but they've got negative one goal differential. They've only scored five goals and given up six. They got two wins and two losses, no draws, just like the Union. But uh, just kind of a again they even in those like two wins they had they didn't look super great so it is kind of like a worrisome how worried are you I already see Austin fans being like woof out again so like I, I wonder how worried are you if you're an Austin fan? Uh, Jazzy Sardes does not look good. Um, couldn't have predicted that. Um, Jerusi again, you and I talked about this. Sebastian Jerusi was not going to have the year he had last year. Like we we. We knew he would be good, but he cannot have – like last year what he did was – I mean, it was like every match he had a, a goal or an assist or some kind of creative play that got them on the score sheet. This year I, I think that's where you kind of seen that, like a little bit of progression from him. Veroni's not great. Um, their defense is really going to struggle this year, as we've seen. They've had too many injuries in that back line uh, to start the season. I don't think they get any kind of help until the summer, and if they do, I don't think it's going to be uh, – big enough to really make an impact on that side of the ball. And then it, again, uh, the, the more that this team goes kind of in turmoil, the, I think the worst it's going to get because and, and no offense, their fan base is very passionate. And I think when you've got a fan base that is so vocal, that is that players seem to really listen to. And I only say this because when Kip Keller made the mistake against St. Louis, this team was all, or this fan base was all over him. And they actually had, I think it was Alex Ring or somebody came out and said, hey, you know, back off a little bit. Hey, mistakes happen. Um, but I, I think you're going to see regression from Maxi Rudy. You're not going to get the same season from Fagundo Torres or Fagundo Torres. Um, <laughs> wrong kid. Uh, uh, well, help me. Fagundes, Diego Fagundes. I can't think of the stupid name. Um, Alex Ring, I think, is getting older defensively. They're not as good. Stufer's not going to have the year he had last year either. So, again, that maybe we were a little too high on Austin. Maybe we thought uh, just because they had played so extremely well last year and challenged LAFC, this does not look like the same club. Yeah, just not. I wasn't as high on them as you were. But yeah, it was, it's a one spot. <laughs> you had them in one, Adam in third, right? I thought, had, I thought I had it in second. They can still Damn. finish third, right? They um, could. But they're losing to really bad teams, Jordan. They yeah. just lost to yeah. a semi-pro team. And then basically another semi-pro team in Violet. <laughs> Houston gets their Houston gets their first win of the season. Uh, so that, that's good for them, right? They they get their first points of the season as well. And Hector um, Herrera looked good too. That's the first yeah. one. Uh, we already talked St. Louis, uh, San Jose. So there's that. Uh, Colorado. Scored their goal in the 49th minute, but then Minnesota came back with the Amaria penalty kick 
and uh, what Tapias uh, scoring in the uh, 82nd to win. Um, Minnesota had like only one less shot than Colorado, but had 39% possession to 61 for the Rapids and only had two shots on goal. Both of those are the ones that get into the back of the net. So huge away win for Minnesota where they don't usually win. So that's good for them. They sit fifth. Adrian Heath is safe for another couple years now. And um, yeah, that, that's how you sit. But um, Colorado sit with one point. They're currently wooden spoon favorites as it currently stands right now. Yeah, Robin Frazier. I think you and I said that, that his job was probably more danger than some of the other people that we kind of listed. Um, and I think that still stands. I think he's uh, another couple losses I could see him being let go. Um, and Jack Price went down with a non-contact knee injury. It looked mm-hmm. like it does not look good. It looks like he'll probably, you don't want to speculate, but it, it, it looks like it could impact the season massively. And he's arguably one of their best players. So uh, tough sledding, uh, no pun intended there, because um, it looks like they are absolutely melting out there, the Rapids. So not sure what's going on, but it's uh, not something that's going to be fixed, I don't think, anytime soon. LA Galaxy had their opening game, uh, uh, home game. Um, home game. <laughs> yeah. They, they draw 1-1. Vancouver scored 14 minutes in through Tristan Blackman. Uh, Lear Dom scored in the 45th plus four right before half uh, to make it uh, 1-1. They had 20 shots to Vancouver's 12. Six shots on goal to Vancouver's two, but I uh, just couldn't find the winner there. So LA Galaxy have now played two games no sorry three games and have two points so let's go through the table okay eastern conference atlanta first place with 10 points the revs in second with nine points cincinnati in third with eight nashville in fourth with seven nycfc in fifth with seven philly in six with six miami in seventh with six toronto in eighth with five orlando in ninth with five end of playoffs as they currently stand then you have Red Bulls, D.C., Columbus, Montreal, Charlotte, Chicago. Over in the West, St. Louis in first with 12 points. LAFC in second with seven. Already a five-point gap there. Um, Seattle in third with seven. Dallas in fourth with seven. Minnesota in fifth with seven. Austin in sixth with six. San Jose in seventh with six. Salt Lake in eighth with three points. Houston in uh, ninth with three points. By the way, East is stronger right now. We're talking about bottom playoff teams. Portland in 10th with three. Vancouver, LA, SKC with two points. And Colorado in last with one. All right. Uh, so I guess later this week we'll be doing our preview. Um, well, actually, I'm yeah, we'll do it Friday, right? Because I'll be back Friday. Yeah. So there you go. Anything else before we head out? No. USL Championship has just started, so make sure to check out our Close Pyramid episode, which we get to record here soon. So that'll be exciting. But, yeah, keep following along. It's been a lot of fun so far this season. It's uh, chaos right now, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Well, you can reach us at Stateside Show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and we will catch you all next time when we preview Match Day 5. <laughs>